Um, okay, on to the next presentation. We have, um, Namala, is the video ready? Namala? Okay. Okay, for the next presentation, we have... Um, Happy New Year. <laughs> I'm uh, saying Happy New Year. It's great to be part of the Tech Point Build event 2022, uh, virtually. I'm Alan Tef. I'm the CEO at Healthlane. And we are building tech-powered, uh, personalized healthcare for Africans. When Ifani reached out to me uh, to give a, a talk on the next frontier for healthcare in Africa, um, it's health technology or health tech, I thought the best way to approach it was to marry the past and the present and to start the conversation for the future. A bit of background, um, today we are building um, Health Lane, which is simplifying how uh, we understand, we track and we improve our health. Uh, but I've been building software for in health tech, in the health space, for the last 10 years, building and selling software across Africa, uh, from Ivory Coast to uh, Cameroon to Nigeria to Mauritania. And I'm also a frustrated patient, um, having lost uh, loved ones to the challenges of our healthcare today. And we've also owned a couple of health facilities. So this gives me like a 360 degree view of the health tech space. And I hope that today I can start the conversation on what the future may look like for, for the this, for this space. First, let me start with the past. When we started in 2011, 2012, uh, the biggest innovations at that time was leveraging on SMS and USSD uh, to deliver healthcare and awareness. The most talked about startups at that time were building uh, products in maternal health. They were building products to uh, sensitize on malaria. Um, at that time, EHR was, wasn't really big, so it was more of data collection. So we had forms, we we're building forms on um, feature phones that could help health personnel collect data and transmit to like a central platform. Uh, this is just to name a few. There was no VC activity in the space in, in health tech. Uh, no one was funding health startups in 2011, 2012. Um, and when funding came, it usually came not from VCs, uh, but from development organizations. So the UN, the WHO, the World Bank. And most of the times, even the development organizations used to be the competitors of the startups because they will bring funding, they will partner with the government, and they will even import technology like electronic health records. Then came 2015, 2016. Um, the, the cost of smartphones uh, went down, the cost of data went down, and uh, it opened a way to bring more sophisticated solutions to consumers. And this was really like the end for SMS and USSD. Moving to the present today, we are 2022, uh, we are living in the post COVID world. COVID has been the digital accelerator of the decade of the decade. Everything in healthcare is being digitalized. We are seeing companies digitalizing pharmacy. We are seeing companies digitalizing lab testing. We are seeing companies digitalizing doctor access, uh, what we call telemedicine. We are seeing companies digitalizing electronic re uh, um, health records and making them electronic. And we, we are also seeing um, modern health infrastructure being built. Uh, we have new hospitals today that are leveraging on uh, good technology and good customer service, and they are out to grab the opportunity that medical tourism presents today. We're also seeing uh, health innovations when it comes to financing and giving loans to health to hospitals. Despite the fact that um, less than $100 million was invested in health tech 
um, across, across Africa in 2021. Health tech today is where fintech was two or three years ago. So we are at the point where we are soon going to be seeing astronomical growth in the health tech space. Talking about the future, um, I'm going to talk about five areas that I believe uh, there's going to be astronomical growth. We're going to see astronomical, astronomical growth this year, but also in the next one to two years. The first is personalized or lifestyle healthcare. Today, it's hard to live healthy. It's hard to eat well. It's hard to exercise regularly. It's hard to sleep right. It's even hard to access convenient and comprehensive testing, uh, health testing or health checkups. Our current environment today and our lifestyle today makes it difficult. And that's why we're seeing a rising, uh, we're seeing 60% rise in uh, chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension. At HealthLane, this, are, this is one of the problems we're trying to solve. Today, we provide personalized healthcare. We're simplifying how people access comprehensive testing. We're simplifying how uh, you get a personalized care plan after your complete check. Uh, and our care plan is usually around nutrition, exercise, supplementing. Um, we believe if we're successful, then everyone is going to be living forever young, living longer and living healthy. There is going to be, this is the future of healthcare, and we're going to see a lot more companies coming into the space. The second area is at-home hospital. Uh, this is the next big step for telemedicine. Texting a doctor hasn't been the best way to get quality healthcare. And it's been the biggest challenge for telemedicine today. There, is there a future of where 90-95% 90, 90, of whatever happens in the hospital when you're sick can move to the home, to the comfort of your home. There is that future exists. Terranos wanted to build that future. It didn't happen. Uh, but we're, we're going to see a lot more companies um, come, come in and move the hospital to the home. The third area is the growth of retail healthcare companies. Um, we are going to see business this year and in the coming years, we're going to see business model innovations in online pharmacy and drug sourcing. That has happened in social commerce space and traditional retail space. Um, what about a future for online pharmacy where health facilities buy now and they pay later? Consumers buy medication now and they pay later. Consumers buy health checkup package, packages now and they pay later. We're going to see a lot more. I believe we're going to see a lot more innovations um, in this in this space um, this year and next year. The fourth area is innovations in how we train our doctors. Human resource. It's been neglected for a while, but we are waking up to the fact that the average doctor today has twenty year old knowledge. If you want to argue with this, ask the doctors around you what's their vitamin D level which is huge for immunity. Um, today, we are going to see a future where um, a lot more companies are going to be simplifying how doctors are trained and how doctors upgrade their skills. The fit area is around uh, new technologies. So this is really anything blockchain, metaverse, augmented reality, uh, internet of things, AI for drug discovery, innovations in clinical research, and even hardware for surgery or for any other medical procedure. The question is, are these just buzzwords or are we going to see useful applications for Africa and for the world? The answer lies within all of us, all of you in the room, all of us at Tech Point uh, Build event this year. Um, and the challenge that um, we have is to go dream big, is to believe, and to take action. I hope this was a good conversational starter for the future of health and health tech and technology in the health space. And I can't wait to see what is going to be built this year 
and in the coming years. Thank you for your time and see you as we build. Thank you very much. Please clap for him. Um, we're just going to go to the next phase.